In the plant kingdom, the next group are the angiosperms. Angiosperms are uh, the well developed uh, plant group in the entire plant kingdom. These are phanerograms. That is, uh, flower formation is present and uh, they also produce fruits and seeds so here in gymnosperms we have seen that uh, seeds formation is present but uh, they lack the fruit but here the fruit formation is also been seen that's why these seeds are not naked seeds but they are enclosed by the fruit wall or the pericarp and uh, these are uh, tracheophyta group of plants that is, uh, they have the vascular tissue like uh, xylem and phloem. Then these are embryophytes. In the life cycle, after the formation of zygote, the zygote undergoes mitosis to form a diploid structure called as embryo. which leads to the formation of a sporophytic generation then these are non archegoniates that is a uh, archegonia is not formed then uh, this type of characteristic features can be seen in the angiosperms so here in angiosperms there is a lot of diversity in habit habitats morphology structure shape of the other things so here related with this one some of the plants are growing as uh, hydrophytes some of them are growing as xerophytes some are growing as a uh, majority of them are growing as mesophytes and uh, some we can see in the form of Epiphytes, heliophytes, zeophytes, lithophytes, like different types of habitat been uh, observed in the members of uh, angiosperms. But basically, we say hydrophytes, xerophytes, and mesophytes. Then we see the habit of them some of the plants are herbs some of them are growing as shrubs and some of them are growing as a tree like habit in this one some of them are uh, showing prostrate stems and some of them are showing erect stems and some are the creepers and some of them are the climbers and some of them are woody climbers here in angiosperms the size in the size there's a lot of diversity starting from the tiny microscopic plants like wolfia which is considered to be the smallest angiospermic plant to the biggest one that is a eucalyptus plant which grows around 100 meters of height which is considered to be the one of the tallest plant so likewise a lot of diversity from the smallest to the biggest plant then here in these members we can see the sporophytic generation and the gametophytic generations the sporophytic generation is the dominant stage which is a Deployed, multicellular, independent, phototrophic plant body which is having root system and uh, 
shoot system when it comes to the root system as we know this is a part which is underground and uh, fix the plant into the substratum or the soil apart from that one it also absorb the nutrients like uh, minerals and water from the soil so here that there are two types of root systems are there one is the tap root system and uh, fibrous root system apart from these two types so we can also see the presence of uh, adventitious roots in the members of angiosperms that is uh, the roots which develop from any part of the plant body other than the radical those are called as a adventitious roots which are produced to provide some additional support or uh, additional need to the plant body then come into the shoot system here the main axis of the shoot system is called as stem and this stem may be aerial or uh, sometimes uh, subaerial or underground also and uh, this stem will bear the branches which produces the lateral appendages like uh, leaves flowers and fruits on them so here if you take the branches so different types of branching may be there it may be dichotomous branching or sometimes it may be monopodial branching or sympodial type of branching can be seen but at the same time there are some members in which the branching is completely absent like in cocos nucifera example and uh, maybe the branches present or may not be present but they produce the leaves either directly on the stem or on the branches and here the arrangement of leaf is called as a phyllotaxy it may be either in the form of alternate phyllotaxy opposite phyllotaxy or oral phyllotaxy so here the leaves are considered to be the photosynthetic organs main photosynthetic organs which are uh, green in color and uh, considered to have the stomata and helping in the function called as exchange of gases and transpiration then let us come to the other part that is uh, before the flower you have to talk about inflorescence here here the arrangement of uh, the flowers is in a specific manner so the mode of arrangement of uh, the flowers is called as a inflorescence so likewise the cymose type racemose type are been observed in different members of uh, angiosperms then coming to the flowers so flowers are considered as the reproductive organs are reproductive structures here the flowers are been observed in the gymnosperms for the first time but the flowers in gymnosperms generally lack perianth in them but here the flowers of uh, angiosperms will have perianth also that is uh, sepals and petals are present apart from the perianth they also have the essential organs which are participating directly in the sexual reproduction those are andrisium individual parts of andrisium are called as stamens and uh, gynesium individual parts of gynesium are called as a uh, carpels so stamens are considered to be the male reproductive organs and uh, gynesium or the carpels are considered as a uh, female reproductive organs so here sepals pe petals that is perianth are not concerned directly in the reproductive process but the sepals are useful for protection and uh, petals are useful for attracting the insects so here what is the need of uh, attraction of the insects means the insects are the agents of pollination which will help in transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the say of the different flowers present on the same plant or on the different plants if you see the reproductive organs like uh, starting with stamens the stamens contain uh, 
long stalk like structure and uh, a swollen part at its tip so the long stalk which is called as a filament and uh, the tip which is a swollen is called as a anther so here filament is considered to be the proximal region whereas anther is a distal part then inside the anther pollen sacs or the pollen chambers are present this pollen chamber or pollen sacs contains a sporogenous tissue which is diploid in its nature this sporogenous tissue when they undergo mitosis they produce microspore mother cells and these microspore mother cells are also diploid in their nature this microspore mother cells will undergo meiosis to produce tetrad of microspores which are haploid in their nature and from this tetrad the four microspores are separated to produce the pollen grains or microspores the pollen grains are produced inside the microsporangium or the pollen sac or pollen chamber and when the anther become matured the pollen grains are released from the pollen sac or from the anther and they will reach the stigma of a right type or the wrong type right type and wrong type means here if the pollen grains reach the stigma of the flower which belongs to the same species so we call it as right type and uh, if the pollen grains reach the stigma of the flower belongs to different species so we call it as a wrong type likewise the pollen grains are transferred to the stigma by a process called as pollination here the pollination is called as indirect type of pollination because the pollen grains are reaching the stigma but not the ovule directly so here when they reach the stigma so here the interactions will occur between the stigma and the pollen grains so that is what the stimulus is received by the pollen grains if the stigma receives the right type of pollen grains and in the meantime what happens the pollen grain will produce the pollen tube so actually here there are different agents of pollination are present those are uh, it may be with the help of uh, wind we call it as anemophily or it may be with the help of water hydrophily or it may be with the help of uh, insects like entomophily likewise there are different agents of pollination which are helping in transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma but out of all of the agents entomophily is the most frequent method of pollination which occurs in the angiospermic plants then when they reach i'll say that uh, the start the pollen grains start germinating and produces the pollen tube and in the meantime the pollen grains inside the pollen grains the division will be taken place leading to the formation of male gamete this pollen tube will pierces to the stigma style and ovary finally reach the ovule and when they reach the ovule the pollen tube will uh, burst or uh, a small pore is formed at its tip to release the male gametes into the embryo sac in the essential organs the next one is a uh, gynecium which contains individual parts called as carpels so each carpel contains three parts that is stigma style and ovary and inside the ovary the ovules are present so ovules are uh, surrounded by the ovary wall and uh, inside the ovules you know that uh, a diploid tissue called as nucellus is present and this nucellus is surrounded by a protective 
layers that is called as a integuments based on the number of integuments ategmic unitegmic and bitegmic ovules are present so here this is a new cellus and this part is called as chalaza and this part is called as a micropyle region and this is a stalk of the ovule that is funicle or funiculus then uh, here inside the new cellus one of the cell become larger and uh, that is the initial cell for the formation of megaspore mother cell so here th that is called as archisporial cell so from that the megaspore mother cell is formed which is diploid in its nature and this megaspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to produce a tetrad of megaspores which are haploid in their nature but here they there are different uh, methods are there after this step that is uh, sometimes one megaspore may be functional sometimes two are functional and sometimes all the four are functional based on that one the from here the female gametophyte is formed which is haploid in their nature so here out of these tetrads if one functional megaspore is forming into female gametophyte we call it as monosporic type and if uh, two functional megaspores are forming into female gametophyte we call it as bisporic type and if all the four megaspores are remain functional producing female gametophyte we call it as tetrasporic type likewise different uh, methods of female gametophyte is present in this the female gametophyte which is formed is called as embryo sac and this embryo sac is uh, present inside the new cellus and this embryo sac generally contains seven cells and uh, eight nuclei so it is uh, organized into three parts one is called as egaparatus antipodals and central cell here uh, the egaparatus contains uh, egg cell and uh, two synergid cells apart from that one the three antipodals are present towards the chalazal end and uh, two nuclei are present in the central cell so those are the two polar nuclei one is coming from upper side and other is coming from the lower side in this manner so when the pollination have been taken place i said that uh, the pollen tube will uh, enter into the embryo sac and release the two male gametes into the embryo sac out of that one male gamete which is haploid will fuse with the egg cell which is also haploid and resulting in the formation of zygote which is uh, a diploid in its condition and this process is called as syngamy or first fertilization or we can call it as a true fertilization because two gametes that is male and female gametes are participating here then uh, as we said that uh, the pollen grain produces two male gametes so the second male gamete is there no so that second male gamete which is haploid in its nature will fuse with the secondary nucleus so secondary nucleus is formed from the fusion of uh, upper polar nucleus and the lower polar nucleus in the central cell that's the reason why the secondary nucleus will be in diploid condition so here this fusion will take place leading to the formation of primary endosperm cell which is triploid in its nature because one set of chromosomes from male gamete and two sets of chromosomes from the second nucleus are uh, present the fusion occurs between three sets leading to the triploid primary endosperm cell so here this process is called as triple fusion and uh, here this is the second fertilization which is taking place inside the embryo sac and here this is not a true fertilization because uh, 
only the male gamete is participating but not the female gamete and uh, as a result of uh, the fertilization two structures are formed one is zygote and primary endosperm nucleus both of them are present inside the embryo sac only and here as two times of fertilization is taking place we call it as a double fertilization so this is a unique feature present in the angiosperm group of plants because up to gymnosperms we can see only single fertilization only one times of fertilization will be taking place but here the two times of fertilization taking place that's why we call it as double fertilization process and here the post fertilization changes will be taking place in the angiosperms in that process the major changes are the zygote which is formed here will be converted into embryo and uh, the primary endosperm cell will be converted into endosperm here the endosperm will also be in the triploid condition then uh, the ovules are converted into seeds and the uh, ovary is converted into fruit wall likewise uh, some complex changes will be taking place after the fertilization we call them as post fertilization changes likewise uh, the seed formation the fruit formation will be seen in the members so once the seeds have been formed they contains the embryo and endosperm inside them then uh, the endosperm is providing nutrition to the developing embryo and uh, the embryo as we know it contains a radical plumule and cotyledons when the seed germinates the embryo will be converted into the next generation of sporophytic plant body from which the radical is giving rise to root plumule is giving rise to the shoot and uh, the cotyledons are giving rise to the primary leaves the cotyledons will provide nutrition to the initial growing stages till they form the leaves by themselves so that is a these are the changes that are taking place during the life cycle of uh, angiospermic plants in gymnosperms there are two classes or there one is a uh, dicotyledons and uh, monocotyledons dicotyledons are the one in which uh, two cotyledons are present inside the seed and uh, monocotyledons are the one in which seed contains only single cotyledon so likewise uh, two further classes are there in the angiosperms here the dicots and monocots are further divided into the series subclasses series orders and uh, families likewise uh, based on the similarities and the dissimilarities